please note that this video contains spoilers for the subject and the series and or franchise leading up to this entry. I either have or will cover other parts of this franchise and this video either is or will be linked below. I'm not going to restate here what I did or will say in the other video. These videos get long enough as it is. Put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam-pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. I got this either as present or I got it on discount, so I did not pay very much money for this and am thus not bitter on account of that. Married with Children Season 2 Thoughts. Let me just get this thing fastened safely and. There we go. Starting with the intro. Now. Yeah, from Wikipedia, beginning of the season, Kelly is portrayed as a girl of reasonable intelligence though she's often teased by Bud for her promiscuity and bleached hair. By the end, however, her character obtains her trademark stupidity that will become both a plot, plot device and comic focus for the rest of the series. The season also contains the first use of the Bundy cheer and the first in instance of the Bundys leaving Chicago. And... And Michael Faustino, David's younger brother, makes the first five guest appearances during the course of the series. And this one actually, the, the DVD has subtitles for the English audio track, unlike season one. And some of the episodes are much wackier than season one. There's some racism in this season. Other than that, still enjoying every single joke. Except some uh, homophobic and transphobic, transphobic stuff. Yeah, most of that stuff bothered me. And Dias Deacon on the most recent video, his Stardust review, normalized his audio levels. I'm not conceited enough to think it's just for me bringing it up, especially in just in a long video that wasn't focused on that. I'm sure others have brought it up as well, but props. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I swear, I, I do try to clear my throat before recording. I always seem to need to during as well. Poppies by the Tree, Part 1. Now, this is number 206. I think I'd rate it at least a little higher than that. And I like the... <coughs> excuse me, psycho parody, both in visuals and audio, and of course Friday the 13th, especially once you know what the motive is. That was just a woe. It didn't mean anything. The common American on democracy, everybody. Yeah, I can't just let you have it. <laughs> Very careful with it, and she tosses it. You gave them our good luggage? Every day is a vacation to you, so what am I talking to you for? And the hot bit with, yeah, everyone. <coughs> I'll help you find one. We just put that on as a nasty. We'll steal it anyway. I'm in. 
unopened. The, the goofs on IMDb point out, apparently it had been opened by the time he does start to drink, so yeah. It's a reflex action. From the war. I'm a cop. Vice. <laughs> it's my turn to be the customer. And that mentality is why waiters, postal workers, and the like hate their jobs. She's pregnant, Mom. Am not. It must just be a beer belly. Not soon enough. Oh, sorry, that was Peg. Two out, not the other one. You know, for the second season, they really hit the ground running. A two-parter with new sets, characters, and a threat to the Bundys. Poppies by the... Yeah, just making sure that it was... You know, Poppies by the Tree, part two. And this is only 231. Man. And... Yeah. He was listening behind the door, and he was smacked up against the wall. <laughs> Suit yourself. <laughs> Peg, do something. And she screams, something else. Who do we know who's insane and has a sharp object? Grandma? Leave her as an offering. Last born, first torn. That wasn't on the brochure. Thank your father. Thanks, Dad. And the sheriff couldn't catch an M&M in his mouth. Good thought, but we can't get to our clothes. And they all fall asleep. Oh, no. Powerful feet. And everyone's scared of the fork. Family meeting. We're out of here. Why am I running from the axe? Thanks, Dad. I was dead before I got here. Someone's got to be the brave one. I'll stay here with the kids. Steal everything that's not tied down. Thank you. He's my deputy. High standards. I was wondering why I was carrying the bags. Sorry, my owl voice is a little over the top, isn't it? He won't keep her long. A little kid of 20. And Peg and his... What? Uh, the thing in her mouth. What do you call that stuff? A vacuum? I don't do anything. I'm a housewife, damn it. I don't kill. I, I might if I don't have a TV. I hate Phil. You are sick. And you know, if you don't call out, then I'll kill you first. Ow! <laughs> I'll cook for whoever wins. Hey, don't threaten them. And you do, you can kind of see the rubber handle on the axe wobble during the struggle. Not that I blame them for taking the precaution. You know, especially in, in like a live show where it's clearly the real performers, not stunt personnel. Yeah. Will you stop it? First time you've ever said those words, Kel. They find trouble. He's also the man who met Andy Griffith. We'll untie her home. Maybe. Thanks, Dad. Fine. Where's my camera? I am not obsessive. He picks the tiny thing off pant leg. Good red herrings in these two parts. If I were a rich man, Number 204 on the Lion King. More new sets. Dinner's on the table. Hey, you shouldn't have overexerted yourself like that. 
It's like I've done and died and gone to hell. <laughs> Your birthday just won't be special. Where's the chips? Probably at the store. At least the kids are gone are gone and in they come. Who cares? Good boy. I did. Think about that on your way upstairs. If you had any money at all, I'd go with the BMW. The tarp over the field. Stay tuned for something boring. Why don't you ask a friend? I love it when you talk spending to me. Call the girls in about 10 years. I don't exactly know. If Wyatt wakes up, kill him. Oh, that's it. It's illegal. But he can buy and sell you, buddy. And Kelly's making a shopping list. Let's test that theory. And eventually he gives in and uses them thinking the money is his for his own gain. And I love the smash cut to the full breakfast table. Money talks, Kel. Right here when you get out. And they laugh. But I actually like my home life. No, it's the frog legs of your, of your wife. But you're gonna love this. Oh yes, he will. Keep your kids away from my Mercedes. Someone could really have taken it. Lots of thanks dads in this episode. I feel spoiled. Family suicide attempt. Gee, that's dark. There's a lot of like suicide and murder in this season. In this season, yeah. And there was some in the first season as well. I'll try to notice if they keep that going. Shoes. He sells shoes. Buck can do it. That's uh, this is number one hundred and thirty-one. Now that's more like it. That I agree with. Is that too much to ask for? We don't keep any food in the house. Al, you eat like an animal. It's just this darn headache. A house with two husbands. Freedom. <laughs> I guess I better get rid of all the dirty work at one time. It's been two months. When are you going to fix the fence? Tomorrow. Complaints for the neighbors. And the pool neighbor impregnated and Buck runs off. Dog pimp. But they seem awfully stupid. <laughs> You've already been sued by life. Hundreds of dollars, which would have taken him thousands of years to make. And Al refuses to neuter his dog, of course. We'll do something. And he puts on when a man loves a woman. When a van hurts a woman, it really makes a mess. Well, Al, I don't mind bathing. <laughs> Live through him. Exactly. That's why. Personally, I understand it, but it's like picking up the poop. Don't get a pet if you can't handle the uncomfortable things that are your responsibility. Nag him till they drop off. Steve's gonna have a vasectomy. Steve's gonna what now? Exactly. It means that much. It's reversible. You have the money, and as she said, there are downsides to the pill. And he already agreed that they're not going to have children. So it's not as though she... Yeah, it's not an unreasonable expectation for her to have. But... 
Yeah, this episode presents all the perspectives on the issue via the dog. There's no need for insults. The pill could be dangerous, so could I if you try to rewire my plumbing. And Alice like, well, we'll ask Bud, it's his dog. Sure, that backfired. Al, he knows nothing. <laughs> There's a woman for you. I love bipedal Chewbacca soup bug. Buck, sorry. And you, you know, you, you see him there and you wonder, is he going to talk to me? Yep. What, do you want me to dance for joy? Better than one I had before. That is, before they found out, find out I'm a eunuch. Testy. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> that poor woman? Want to go upstairs? That is, unless you're... Yep. Buck does speak after this, but we don't get the suit for those. And I know some people think that that's a blessing, but I, I will say there's obviously a lot later that they couldn't have done if they had him in the full suit. But yeah, I, I love both. I love Buck speaking, period. Girls just want to have fun, part one. Now, this is episode 111 on the ranking, and yeah, that is definitely, it deserves to be very high. Fill it. For a second, we thought Peg was the woman who would be working in Al's kitchen. Of course not. You know, Al will trust a repair woman in his kitchen working on, you know, an appliance in there that he needs to work before Peg will end up actually working in the kitchen. Me too. What's the emergency, Al? Thanks, Al. I ran a marathon once and didn't even know it. Looks like an apple. Yep, just keep digging that hole. What kind of apple, Steve? <laughs> I love Steve's face as he realizes it's her. I got a t-shirt that says it. Ah, oh, a oh man. That's not true. That's Repair Woman. Somewhere Tweed. It wasn't from across the room, Al. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Wait a minute, with you? Oh yeah. And it's like the, the Cherry episode, but she knows about it, where before she may only have suspected. I mean, he does tell her where this, so, you know, makes sense that she would figure out that there was some other person involved there. Sorry about your finger. Something I could enjoy would be nice. Usual table? I'm glad that the women get to stare at sexy people, like in this episode, too. Sorry, in this episode, too. I realize there's, not, there's nowhere near as much, you know, that kind of stuff for the women as there is for the men. And yeah, I, could, I guess I should maybe say that. I, I, I'm not sure if I did say that in the first one. I will be saying it in the review, but that's a little while away since there's nine seasons to go. I don't particularly like the... Yeah, I think I did say that. You know, if, if the, when, when the show does the kind of, you know, here's a sexy woman to stare at, if they don't also have some jokes there, I, I think it's just kind of cheap. But, you know, the, the cherry cherry thing, for example, the Cherry Sisters, yeah, the, the Cherry Sisters with, you know, they were legitimately being funny, it wasn't just, 
Yeah. Cheese. She knew what she was doing, all right. He sold me that refrigerator, too. Why are we being punished? They're not going to be around forever. Aw. But they do own some lakefront property. Oh. It's like they know. She can't even tell us about it, apart anyhow. Lumber camp toy or the other woman. Wow. And 20 bucks to marry one. Because my checkbook makes it more funny. And Marcius won over. I lost my wedding ring down Zorro's pants. One of the best lines of dialogue in comedy history. And a great closer as well. Girls just want to have fun, part two. And this episode ranks as number 63, so yeah. And that's quite... Yeah, I agree with that. We have to get something from Zoro's pants. The bunny rule and two, yeah, twice. Steve will answer the door. Kill me. And now Peg imagines Al to be someone else. We love you, Mom, but not today. Well, that makes the days that you do matter more. Bud tells us, so Bud lied? I'm sorry, Kelly's at her grandmother's. Does Marcy Rhodes live here? Practically. Perhaps I'll just leave my message and run. Too good looking to be a Wilbur. If my wife should happen to lose something down your pants, so will you. Who's the guy in the black Porsche? Santa Claus. Al, I'm an educated man. Don't you think I know all that? Gee, if I knew you'd be upset, I wouldn't have told you. <laughs> Make the mark of the Z. Al, I'm going to have a Stepford wife. Tell her you got the ring from Al Bundy. And now, ladies, the shoe salesman. And Al goes through all the things she spent his money on. I want to know what bank it's in. And I don't want you thinking about Troy's either. I try to be, I bet. That's big of you, running that marathon. Still, you tried to catch the woman, that woman in the lead. I don't know. It was for you. Aw, went I and the audience. Coupons from Peg. So I just tore them up and flushed them down the toilet. Oh, because Al touched them. So you lost your ring down Zorro's pants, did you? Of course he wasn't going to completely let it go. In a later season, he would have, and I think does, take advantage of this kind of power over. Or wait, or am I just thinking of the the impotent episode? Nah, I, I'm not sure. And yeah, you know, Al and his friends. Actually, we we have barely seen Al's friends so far. But yeah, they don't have they haven't started going to their strip joint yet. And a few themes are continued: the gender is being equally bad, Peg wasting Al's money. Now, personally, I support sex work as long as they're making enough money to get along or treated right. No one is triggered or pressured into spending money on them. They can move on from it and have a career in another field later it, you know I yeah it, it you know a lot of people don't stay in sex work for 
you know, like for, for their entire lives, for, you know, it's, it can be very hard on you and, you know, unfortunately a lot of people aren't considered attractive once they get a little up in years and, yeah. You know, the... Oh, yeah, yeah, no tr trick or pressure into it or into spending money on them, and so, yeah. The only problem here is that Peg spending money she was to spend on other things. I don't think Al is right to ban her from it. It's really hypocritical of him not to let her ogle the other sex. If she had to save up money that she can use for her leisure activities, you know, or to, to go but to not be able to tip, I think she should be able to go. And, you know, even if both genders were equally sexist, for example, clearly men do have more power than women, so it's not quite, but, yeah. For whom the bell tolls. And this is number 59, and it's, yeah, quite, yeah, this is one of my favorite episodes. They told you? <laughs> or rather, they told you. I think that's how she said. Must be your mother. Tell her I said oink. And he hangs up on Peg's mom. Family meeting and only Buck comes down. Family, coven, and both Kelly and Peg called stud. Don't pay. Kelly's still here. Sports hotline, sports hotline, sports hotline. Those are okay. Mom is down to nearly 200. I'm not paying for mistakes. I've been doing that since I got married. We need a phone number. We use the phone book. I was going to burn that for heat, Al. Sex, Al. Great. The one thing I would pay for. Me too. Good night, Al. And the crime light shines directly on his pillow. Shining on an appropriate place. Your feet. Nothing I can do about it. A little bit of dignity and he puts a bra on his eyes. What? What? Be careful, she's got a whistle now. Even he knows you can't fight the phone company, and the connection goes. They're here. Nobody ever died because they didn't have a phone, but Kelly's barely hanging on. Or should I say, oot? Canuck, by any chance? By living with them? Where's that spare idea I used to light my cigars? Seriously, Steve, take your non-essential 80 bucks and shove them. America's obsession with the phone. Peggy, your mother called. Peggy, your mother called. Peggy, your mother called. To know if you're okay. <laughs> because she always calls. Kelly, it's for you. <laughs> That's pretty stupid, Kel. Good boy, bud. And the crime light is on his face again. Till the Sandman comes. Can't forget that maternal instinct, can you? I deserve the air. Oh, Al, always willing to take one for the team. They keep away the mosquitoes. <laughs> and a hammer. Problem? Solution. I know the answer to this one. But bigamy is illegal in this state. Making raisin bread, Mom? Okay, but I don't think I'll need you. Why would you move back home if you got married, Kelly? 
Kelly, quick, your liver. For a phone? I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, she's getting pretty stupid. Which is something, I would have a problem with that if it wasn't for so many male characters on the show being incredibly stupid as well. In this episode, Al is incredibly stupid. And many, many other times. He makes them he makes the money, Mom. Good luck to us all. Would you see right through that? What's the worst thing to have to grow up and have somebody call you? Shoe salesman. Wouldn't that make us quitters? See, that was actually kind of smart. Go to your first thought she has and it's against me. So you've already got a taste of our medicine. She was packing her bags and the smile on Steve's face. <laughs> Once she's in motion, you can't stop her. He got them to move that street light and he's just lying there staring. But yeah, Kelly's getting stupider. And we never did find out about the call to Vancouver. You know, was it a mistake for the on the part of the phone company, or did one of them call and lie about it? I feel like the resolution is weak or non-existent for a lot of these first two seasons of episodes so far. Why did no one call Kelly? Were they just humoring her, and she was the one calling them before? And I think this is the first real Al fights a cause episode, which is one of my personal favorite genres, subgenres. Born to walk. And this is uh, this is ranked number 190, which is also quite appropriate. So it shouldn't take long. That's a good impersonation of him, Kel. I love Peg not understanding wager. Your toothbrush. Car meat. Go hunting. Out come the Bundy squad. And the tail light again, even on the bike. That's where I lost it in this episode. They built that so beautifully, repeating that ticket. Already did. I love why Peg didn't and won't get Al juice. Bike up front. Everything goes wrong for Al. It's a thundercloud that follows him around. Then the instructor drove her over his foot. The person there who should be the best driver, the most careful driver. And he hangs it up. Al keeps trying to get money for the bet and to get to the track. It's a lot like the first aired Simpsons episode, The Father Wants... Oh, sorry, those are two different notes. But anyway, The Father Wants to Bet on a Racing Animal because of it, its name is like his job. The son doesn't believe and doesn't want to help. He ends up not winning, but a friend of his who either did or didn't believe in the bet does win. And Al drives on routine, but he doesn't remember the specific answers to the tests, to the test which are tough. And these are the quotes from IMDb that I also really enjoyed. I don't just, if, if there's a quote on it, it's unlikely, but if there is a quote on there that I don't like, I won't put it in my notes. A peg, maybe you didn't hear me. I said I failed my written test. Well, I didn't say I was proud of you. And mom, dad got another ticket for a broken taillight and one for driving without a license. Oh, I'm sorry, Al. Now I'm proud of you. Well, a special thanks to everyone who didn't get up this morning to drive me to work. That's my bike. I reported it stolen. Well, I'll get arrested for that tomorrow. Today I just got a ticket for a broken taillight. No, this too. Right now your dad is a little irritated because you cost your daddy 500 freaking dollars. But more important than that, 
Well, not more important than that, but as important. You've showed me how little you care. So tomorrow, when I go to get my license, who's taking you, Dad? I'll crawl on my face. When I come home, your daddy is not going to give you anything. Not a smile, no money, no food. I'm not going to lift a finger to help any of you, and I don't expect any of you to lift a finger to help me. From now on, we have a new bunny rule. Every man for himself. And then when he comes home, he needs their help, of course. Hey, Steve. You know that two feet, three inches? Where it was just big enough that a cop spotted me and gave me another ticket for a broken tail. Well, I warned you, Al. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. You know, me and you just have to go hunting one day. Yeah, I'll get you a pair of antlers to wear. Al, I thought you were, you said you were taking me. We'll make a day of it. Oh, these tests are brutal. Oh, here's one that'll never get me on again. How many feet in advance do you have to signal before making a turn in a business or residential area? Who cares? A cop in a business or residential area. <laughs> what a nice little town we live in. Neighborhoods burning down? No cops. There's a robbery? No cops. I start my car? Here comes the Bundy Squad. Oh no, that's my pleasure, Peg. Even though my rates will skyrocket because you're underage and I'm paying a special rate for the bumper car queen over here. Well, I know you want me to, I know why you don't want me to drive and it's not the insurance. Your little girl is growing up and you can't bear to let her go, huh? No, it's the insurance. Peg, sell the house. Why, Al? Did you see a shirt somewhere you like? Yes, it said, congratulate me. Wife's dead. I do. The house is. should be kind of expensive. It's pretty big, but, you know, that's sitcom. Yeah, they do tend to have a big house. I, I'm not sure I've ever seen a sitcom where the family, who are clearly poor, which I've seen a lot of sitcoms where that's the case actually live in a very small place. I, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure I can think of one, at least. I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm just not remembering. And I, you know, there, I haven't watched every sitcom ever. Saturday, 11 p.m., make love. 11.05, Al goes to sleep. 11.06, Finish making love. They have a lot of like vibrator jokes here early on, with the you can't take batteries home to meet your mother and this and yeah. Well, I suppose this might not be about a vibrator, but it is about sex not involving the man. So you know, what what is that saying? Female masturbation is a slippery slope. Alley, Alley of the Dolls. And this wasn't. This one is number eighty on the ranking. And yeah, definitely. The smell of farm animals. <laughs> and Mimi, I love Peg's eyes when she hears what Chuck has. Look at that stupid little hop. It works. And you're still a frog. Eight eyes. Um, <laughs> D louse and trot out. She got some of Mimi's hair. <laughs> Why didn't we have another child? Because it'll be a shark jumping moment for the show, obviously. Her decapitation got all of the attention. But yeah, that's, I mean, I'm not going to claim that I'm any better than, than this. That's how you feel about, like, the awful people. I'm not saying everybody's there's awful, but the people that you went to school with, they're awful. That's how you feel about them, you know. Yeah. That's how I still feel about them, and I suppose it's, yeah, probably will still feel that way about them when I'm the age of the, you know the characters of this show. Which I suppose is not that far off, depending on which one it is. Well, no, wait, no, they, they've been married for 16 years, so yeah, so a little bit. 
Who? Steve. <laughs> what if you do it and I can't come back? <laughs> Let's bowl. Whoa, Bundy. Can I be an adopted Bundy? Don't push it, Mr. Rolls. But he still got the ice cream. Before that, he was eating an apple. Bud's gonna need Jacques Brumswick. <laughs> My mistake, he's a Bundy. And Bud got Jacques Brunswick. And this is Bowling. <laughs> and Kelly distracts the twins. Do it again. That's all I ever hear from you. I'll even make potatoes. Steve and Smash got and they lost. And again, we don't learn why it went wrong. I feel like there's a later season episode similar to this where like Peg ruins it by telling Al something positive, maybe sexual, messing up his concentration or something. Am I combining different episodes, my memories of these? Other than the burp, they didn't get any comedy from Steve at the alley. Did they cut material? He barely affects the plot. I mean, he teaches Bud to bowl, but he didn't need to be at the bowling alley in the later scenes for that. I, yeah. I, yeah, I, I feel like I'm, I'm noticing that in a lot of these early episodes. I, I feel like they do get a lot better at that in, in later seasons. But, you know, early seasons of a lot of shows, they're still finding their voice. The Razor's Edge. And this is number 49 on the ranking. And yes, it is. I love this episode. I love what Peg would do if I went away for five days. It's not worth the gamble. <laughs> yeah, all well and ends well. I don't look at your face anyway. <laughs> She'll just go back. He's over there. Oh no. You smell good today, Peg. <laughs> I set out the napkins. Is Steve here? I thought maybe we could talk. No! And he slams the door. We we know we never do find out for sure, but from what she's wearing and the way she looks, I I think she was coming over to like try to appease somewhat with with sex but I could be wrong but you aren't going to talk to her are you? sit down Steve I can't what are you gonna do? I'm gonna shave and rock the house <laughs> the usual obstacle what's Al doing? this is one of Steve's socks Yes, but Al's been wearing it. It still doesn't come to an hour and a half. At least not of pleasure. Just has got to stop. I'll loan you something. And yet again, both adult Bundys have a theory that supports their gender. Yeah. Or am I thinking of another episode? Anyway. Do you have any batteries? Take a look at my mother-in-law! In that case, and yeah, some guys really do pig-headedly insist on keeping their beard once they grow one, even if their romantic partner hates it. Steve, I'm going to give you a gift. A special gift to make you stop thinking about Marcy. I didn't want to do this until it was absolutely necessary, so sit down. Clear your mind. Think of Marcy. Now take a look at this photo of my mother-in-law. Ah! Everybody says that. Yep, look at her in a two-piece bathing suit, bending over at the beach on the shore of Lake Michigan to pick up her sunglasses. The summer of 71. Notice the perspiration percolating in the folds of her stomach. You also note that her upper arms are blurry. 
Why, you ask? Well, there was a breeze, and the camera caught them in mid-flap. And again, these jokes would really bother me if they didn't also make fun of the appearance of the men on the show. And again, I realize that's not, it's not quite equivalent. How do you spell revenge? And this is number 123. I think I've ranked higher than that. And no, I probably won't. It's, unless, like, we get to, like, a, a top five of my favorite episodes or something. Other than that, I probably won't try to readjust mental... I, I cannot remember every single episode in my head well enough that I could rank them just, you know just in my head and I really am not good at like sitting down making top anything lists it's only a game if you win if you lose it's a waste of time you'll get used to it son we gotta get rid of your mother bud grandmas I don't wanna know just do what you gotta do. If God wanted women playing ball, he'd have made them men. So sexist. Still, there's something I like about it. You thought that what she was saying was what she liked, but no, this you know, yes, I realize all that, but still, there's excuse me. We've never had a father daughter talk. That's what mom says. Your mom is the reason I may not be around forever. Where they have their own bugs. And then Al goes up there instead of Peg. I forget. Sports and bodily functions. It's what he knows, what he likes. Oh, and don't sit in his spot. Which, which is his spot. I forget. Oh, and he'll break your spine if he sees you touching me. This is my house. Every spot is my spot. I smell juice on your breath. <laughs> Infections? Thanks for saying, have some more juice. There's plenty. Yeah, I hate women. Exactly. Huge part of his personality. We lost to nuns. I may not know all the religious gestures, but I know the one she gave to me. If there's any justice, it's the baseball, please. And she just keeps guessing names. And she takes the beer from Al. She dumped me. Yeah, what'd you do? Maybe that, maybe that's because I'm not insane, like old Jimbo over here. I know, that's my son. I can laugh about that now, too. The, the spawn of Norman Bates and Seabiscuit. Much better than a belt, Dad. And she fell in love with the Domino's delivery man. First time Al threatens a boy Kelly's into? Not the first time we get to know one. I forget, was the... Crap, what was his name? The, the one with the ring from the... Was he into her, or was that one of the others? Because I feel like at least one of the other guys made out with one of the other girls. So I guess possibly, yeah. I love Al's advice to Kelly on men and women. Earth Angel. You want some? I made it myself. And he moves away. You got a night job. Well then, you've been missing work. And Buck just lies down. Oh my god, they're here. And then Buck leaps up. In the basement, warding off evil spirits. Barry? That's it. I can never think of his name. 
Hey, you get it once a month. What's your secret? Sure, sometimes there's a fight, but in the end it gave us two beautiful children. And the talk whistle works on just one of Peg's lady friends. Good God, it calls from everywhere. Every 36 hours, except on weekends, when we catch up. Unlike you, the sun will be up in the morning. Dad? No, it's not that dad. But he takes it anyway. <laughs> Is that okay? <laughs> no. Welcome home, Tiff. This is probably the last time you'll see her. I found it. Get some sheets for the couch, so your mother will be comfortable. She may... She did. Stay. Forever. I hope my aerobics didn't disturb your yard work. No, we barely even noticed you. <laughs> Tiffany, dear, come meet our neighbor. Uh, he lost a tree, but gained a view. Tiffany, Steve. Steve, uh, you. Nice to meet you. Gubla do me. Very smooth, Steve. Anyhow, let me give you a price list. Now on Thursdays she does aerobics, that's ten dollars. On Friday she sunbathes and she does some jogging. That's our combo plat, that's fifteen bucks. But being you live right next door, you might want to go for the weekly rate. That's a that's forty bucks. But with that you get popcorn and a free lottery ticket. I can't believe you, Al. This is truly low. So are you in? Maybe. Al's made a business of it, and in no time too. And they cut down Steve's tree because they were watching to do aerobics rather than what they were doing. Isn't that cute? Who here would be reading? It's not fair. I'm supposed to be the happy one, not you people. Exactly. That's how that, you know, quote-unquote class of people think. And Steve hung up on her. He hasn't climbed anything, anything since you hit this bird. I must be boring you with my petty problems. Kinda, yeah. Man, Tiffany's art must really suck. Garden house. And it's back to normal for Peg's sex life. You better watch out. This one is ranked number six. And, yeah, it's... It's an amazing episode. It's one of the best, definitely. Santa Claus is coming to the Lakeside Mall. Do the Rhodes live here? Why? I have a delivery. Yes, I'm Mrs. Rhodes. And Steve has to be jabbed to sing along. Phil Cronkite's shoes. And Santa lands. Jolly flat man. <laughs> when I watched this the first time, I thought that Al walking up and answering the door outside of proper Santa costume, the beard dam, would run into one or more of the kids and traumatize them. And the following are out of continuity quotes. Santa smells like beer. Catch me in five minutes, I smell like hard liquor. Your mom's the one who makes pies for everyone in the neighborhood except those nice bundies. Okay, Santa will leave you a pony under your tree. But if it isn't there in the morning, that means your mommy chased it away and killed I'm okay. I want to sit on your lap. All right, but make it quick. Santa has hemorrhoids. What was that? I don't know, but if it's dead and has a red nose, we'll throw it in Stephen Marcy's yard. <laughs> 
Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Hey pig, you know what we ought to do tomorrow? We ought to make some Christmas cookies. Oh yeah, and maybe make some eggnog with nutmeg. Mmm. You ghouls! Don't you understand there's a splatter sand all over your yard? What do you want me to do, Steve? Quit eating? Oh, come on. That's not what Christmas is about. Christmas is about family and giving. Okay, here's the crap my family gave us last year. It's time for the traditional re-wrapping of this garbage for your family. Who could that be? Oh, great. With my luck, probably an elf with a knife in his back. Uh-oh. What's wrong now? The Easter Bunny hang himself in my front yard? Dad, why don't we get Bud one of those scratching posts to rub against? You know, it'll save the furniture. You really want to save the furniture, Cal? Why don't you stop putting notches on your bedposts? Now, Bud, apologize to your sister. No. Okay. Thank your father, kids. Thanks, Dad. No, no, Nestor. Despite what your mother says, Mr. Bundy doesn't spread out a tale at midnight. But here's a special Christmas gift for Daddy. Tell him to come home for lunch someday around when Mr. Mailman's there with his special delivery for Mommy. That'll be a real Yuletide treat for old Dad. But what do I get? A new home and a fresh new Mommy. Ho, ho, ho. Well, they're gone. All dead guys and non-relatives out. So long, Cal. Yeah, like they really intended to have you. Now, kids, we wanted both of you. It was your father I didn't plan on. Santa's gone. I'll never be able to enjoy Christmas again. Well, you're in the right place. Come on, Marcy. These things happen. When has this ever happened? A guy dressed as Santa Claus goes skydiving, his parachute doesn't open, and he lands right in your backyard. Cheer up. It could have been worse. He could have landed on the picket fence. Pizza. It always reminds me of our first day on the job. Bundy, you seem like a nice guy, so I'll give you a little advice. Don't die with your jewelry on. Well, that about wraps it up out there. I just have a few routine questions for my report, if you don't mind. Did any of you know the deceased? Well, I read about him in books, but in books he's usually going up instead of down. Okay, so that's a no. Did anyone actually see him fall and hit the ground? I wish. What did Peg give, Peggy give you, Al? Irregularity. And these two. Al, get rid of those kids. If I knew how to do that, we wouldn't have ours. Okay, everybody, boys and girls, and you, Tony. Santa's okay. Now, he just had a little bit of Miss, Mrs. Bundy's cooking, and he's in the bathroom. Bent over, so he's going to be fine. So go home. We want to see him. No. And they throw th snowballs at him. Okay, he's gone. Now for Daddy's present. Bud, run upstairs and get a tie out of Daddy's closet. I'll get a box. Oh, no, no, no. Wait. It's Christmas. We should make it special for him. Bud, get one of his shirts, too. Oh, gosh, I just love Christmas. Aren't you forgetting something coolest dad in the world? Best dad in the universe? You who makes my life worth living... You all want your Christmas presents, don't you? No, we really love you. Dad, can we go to that new Lakeside Mall? No, we can't, and I'll tell you why. That mall is killing your father. Oh, I thought Mom was doing that. Peg, I'm ashamed of you. I know. Peg, if you keep shopping at the new mall, we'll be broken, living in a cardboard box under the L. Not me. I can always divorce you and remarry. And me and Kelly will be living in a foster home. Let's go shopping. Put that in an early grave. Um, family, before you go, would you get old daddy's shotgun staying close together? Dad, where are our Christmas presents? He probably has them in the car, don't you? Well, no. Remember when I said that when we didn't have much, we could always look at the poor people less fortunate than us and feel better? Well, let's find a mirror. You know what you have to do, Al. And he dresses up as Santa. Guys and dolls. There we go. And this is number 151. I think I'd rank it higher.
You stupid. Him, Friday, the professor, Marianne, Ginger. I'm finally gonna get an A. She's listening to the radio and dancing. Why don't you ask me to stop breathing? <laughs> we could get him a wife. I love Al's response to the road role playing. Sex? He has lost weight, hasn't he, Steve? Do I like it? Greatest hobby in the world. And women just don't get it. No, what I just don't get is sex. Men are such idiots. And I married their king. I had a Barbie, which is not a stupid hobby. He'd get in the way. She'll never miss it. <laughs> a three-hour meeting. A three-hour meeting. It's the one with Cousin It. How does she not recognize these iconic TV series, even for being that stupid? Like, just, yeah. I mean, there's no way she didn't watch these shows. There's, yeah, that would be ridiculous. Steve, find them. Find them and kill them. No, don't kill them. Bring them to me. I'll kill them. But not at first. First, I'll take a hammer and smash their toes, little to be. Then, if it was a man, and I know it was a man, I'll turn the hammer around. It's used to tears. Both sides peg. Quoth the raven, you rang? And Steve is terrified and Al doesn't care. And the bikers. That's not my Barbie. You don't love me. <laughs> and Steve shakes his head and Al nods his. And it's the cop cheating. And Al has to give up the baseball cards. And Marcy doesn't care that Steve's hurt. I don't think anybody should. Can I have a car? Any kind you want, sweetheart. And a pony, too. Build a better mouse trap. And this is ranked 53, and that's quite good. I, I do... I forget if this... If maybe the later one where it's a rabbit in the yard, if that one's maybe better than this, but it's definitely wackier. But they're both really great. Eh, I'm not hungry. It was a sound I never heard before. A girl moaning your name. Get us some milk, and she laughs. And Bud describing the sounds. My daddy didn't use a condom. Where is your mother? Never been so scared in my life. What's the problem? You see the vacuum? And still you go on kissing others. And they laugh at Peg. She has cooties. Great. Fifty dollars to kill one little mouse. Completely accurate to the Al Bundy type of American. My brain is at least twice that size. Unlike Mr. Bundy, the mouse gets to eat before he dies. With the three of you here, it's still the mouse I'm after. He used to sleep with one. He was in your shoe and he lived. It's personal now. We could watch 30-something. Everyone who's watching Roadrunner cartoons, yeah. I don't have insurance, so you must be killing me for the sport. But honey, you can't. An average Joe would have used a stick. And Buck walks into the trap. Dad, the mouse chewed through the wire. And Buck has had his paw wrapped up. Even on our honeymoon, Al couldn't admit it. At least yours makes money. Yes, and yours. <laughs> yep. What happened to my life? I used to win all the time. Winners. They become shoe salesmen. 
your life is making me sick. And he brings out the shotgun. This is no drill, let's just get the hell out of here. I missed it, and we have no furnace. So I got him, right? You sure did. <laughs> and now they got it as a pet. Did you hear any noises last night, Kel? I mean, for a while I thought they were coming from your room, but they weren't the usual noises. You know, the whispers, quiet, you wake up my parents, and the muffled sound of eight footsteps heading for the window, then sound of loose change hitting the pillow. You know, bud, with your good looks, I think that you should be a model. I mean, I could see it now, your face on a poster with the caption, My daddy didn't use a condom. Yeah, sorry, I, I thought I removed the doubles of these, but yeah. I guess I hadn't started doing that by this point in the episode watching. You know, I had this horrible dream last night. There was this big mosquito with a huge red head and tight pants hovering over me, sucking money from my wallet. And then I wanted a kiss. By the way, where is your mother? I went downstairs and I only pretended to take up all the traps. But I left one, a big one, with a nice juicy piece of cheese. And this one won't go off with just a little pressure giving him time to escape. No, this one takes the entire body of the mouse and gets set it off. I checked it myself. You know, that's what really sets you apart, Al. An average Joe would have used a stick. Al, it was horrible. It was terrible. I've never been so scared in my entire life. What's the matter? You see the bet? I'm going bowling. Oh, no, you're not. You are not leaving this family alone until either you or the mouse is dead. Kill it, Al. Well, don't worry. As soon as it sees how we live, it'll go away. I know I would. Dad, you cannot be serious. A mouse trap in my room. The guys under the bed object, Kel? Dad, it's a humiliation. What will my friends think when they see mouse traps everywhere? Will they think that unlike Mr. Bundy, the mouse gets to eat before he dies? Mom, how long are we going to have to live with this mouse? Well, your father's taking care of it. Oh, great. Might as well build him a room. It says right here that mice are pretty intelligent. Yeah, right. Look, bud, a mouse has the brain about this big. Mine's at least twice that size. Yeah, but if I only use it half as much, it becomes a fair fight again. Why are you so afraid of a little mouse anyway? Well, it all started when I was five. You see, I found this little ch stray chihuahua puppy in the yard. I snuck it past my mother and I kept it in my room. I slept with it and snuggled it and kissed it and then one day it got sick. <laughs> and you still go on, go on kissing others. Anyway, I took it to my kindergarten teacher and I said, what's wrong with my dog? And she said, that's not a dog, dear. It's a mouse. And then she threw up. And then all the kids threw up. And then they made up this little song about me. Mouse in your face, worms in your hair. Where's the little mouse girl? There, there, there. And they laugh. Well, that's sweet. Thank you very much. Well, kids, I think we learned something today. Don't touch your mother. She's got cooties. Kids, I'm sorry to make a big fuss over a little thing like a mouse. But, you know, there are some things from your childhood you just can't forget. I hope this isn't true. Now, how about a hug? Can't, Mom. You've got cooties. Is he down there? Did you get him? What happened? He dootied on the trap. And in my bowling shoes. Oh, my God. He was in your shoes and he lives? This is no ordinary mouse. Can we call the exterminator now? No, no. It's personal now. Not only will I kill this mouse, I'll torture it. I'll smack him around, I'll throw it against the wall, and if there's one spark of life left in this twitching little body, I'll strap it to a chair, type its eyelids open, and make it watch 30-something. No one duties in Al Bunny shoes and lives. Master the possibilities. And this is number 86, and that's, yeah, also pretty much agree with that. We forgot to do the grocery shopping, but it's daddy's money. Out on a double date, her and two guys. You're thinking of a different kind of bank, Al. All right, back then banks didn't actually grant loans to poor people they knew wouldn't be able to pay back. I'm jealous of ever anyone not married to you. Sue a dog? And what if they did? 
And when Al gets free money, he wastes, just like the family do. Udbe. She said, she said she'd be coming home early. As long as I'm not paying, paying for it, nothing's too good for my wife. Many is the time I've thought of you doing that to the old bird and the, yeah. And Al's cigar. According to Dad, all I need is a few minutes. But I've got all night. <laughs> Did he happen to sign Buck's name to the receipts? Sure. Then it's a prison hill to go on. You might want to let him know. Well, he's sorta at a hotel. Then he's sorta in big trouble. What's the matter? Nothing they can't wait. Here's some soap. Play, play, play. Peggy loves Al. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's 192 on the ranking. I think I'd put it higher. Nah, it's mostly decorative. Ladies, Kelly. Won't they, Mom? Sure they will, son. But not for you. And Al, too, but all of them put the empty carton of milk back in the fridge. Yeah, but she's wrestling in the mud and I'm just living there. Cupid? Nah, he wouldn't show his face after making this match. Oh, leave me alone. Well, you're obviously sitting pretty. Walk the last mile. Damn him! Exactly. I, I've been in really, I've in some of my relationships. I've been on both sides of that. I've been the one frustrated that the other that my partner got me a present I knew I could match, and I've been, you know, the one that my partner was frustrated at. I do occasionally. To figure out the perfect present for someone I care about. You know, even a broken clock. He, uh. Well, he. Daddy? <laughs> what if I do take the socks off? Give me the bag. I, that's that's one of my favorite Kelly moments from these first couple of seasons is the give me the bag and then the whole finding the okay now take this one yeah poor bud no did you April May June those are all words you know you're the one who turned the lights on the only one we can't turn off. I'll never eat cake again. Makes me sick. Reach out and touch someone. Do you have a pen? Why? What did I do? Dad, are you dying? Yes, but no one seems to care. Well then, could I have my own room? Hi, bud. Did you get my valentine? And he shakes the brawl. And he puts it under his shirt. Why did I only get one stinking valentine? <laughs> exactly. Even when you get like, ah, oh, that's, that's a nice, that's a silver lining. Why only that one? She took that brawl thing really well. In a later season, Bud would have lost the girl because of the brawl. Actually, I'm fairly certain there are later season episodes with this kind of subplot. And, yeah, he ends up losing the because he, he does just one thing, or one thing happens anyway, or something. And if Al finally said it. You didn't have to say that. <laughs> oh, God. And then the Chicago Bulls locker room. That's arguably a rape joke, and certainly today, if you made that same joke in a show, you know, 
They'll think she was there to have sex with him and not let her leave without some sexual contact. Why not have Al send her to a bunch of people who wouldn't have sex with her but would quote unquote merely shame her like a convent or nunnery or the like? The Great Escape. And this is number 125, which is about what I'd say probably. I love Bud's call and Bud's requests of Al. We don't have termites. Someone should tell the termites that. Well, look at me. Report card day and her eyes. I have to say, some, some of my favorite stuff in these really are the, the facial expressions and such. Well, this is your lucky day. <laughs> What would you call this mask and flashlight? Poorly hidden? I'm getting my license. How can I disappoint the ladies, Peg? Have sex with them. I intend to. The more you need your books, Cal. When we get home, I won't care. Okay, but remember I asked. See you in the fall. And they all steal from Al. And she does the mannequin challenge. That's Satan, the mole guard dog. Don't worry about him. He can't get in. Good thing too, he's a real killer. Impotent? Or impotent? And this is number 99. I think I might rank it higher than that. You glutton and tang wipe. I really hope the cutaway means they didn't make him eat that. I just told you. And we see how little they eat. You know, this is one of the first times in the series. This might be the first time in the series where the joke really is there is no food for them to eat, period. Does it have a brother? Mine is in the bedroom. My car doesn't go there. Without coming to a complete stop. You maniac. It was cooked. Would you hit? You never should have driven his car. I'm noticing a theme of that, you know, I'm, I forget if it's just these first few seasons, but Peg will talk someone into something that both parties know they, the person really shouldn't do or something, and then, you know, after, yeah, afterwards she's like, why'd you do that? Or it's the, you know, in the first season, she got Al to beat a, to, to get in a fight with a cop because she convinced him that he was only pretending to be a cop. Hide me. I'll pay you. He's going to the garage. The car's in there. Well, why'd you put it in there? She's in here, Steve. You should have paid him, Marcy. And that's the reaction he has just to the car seat. And Al immediately tells Steve about the dent. I mean, since Kelly did that, she touched it. Now it doesn't even feel like it's mine anymore. Such a typical guy thing. And she puts out the cigarette on the frying pan. And Steve's impotent. My god, Al, you are like Steve. Or, sorry, my god, Al, you are like Steve. And between 74 and 79, Al was impotent. I can fail six times too. Wait, 74 to 79? But the show started in 89. Wasn't... Well, I believe in real life, at least. Faustino, the, the bud, is from 71. Oh, yeah, 71. Yeah, that works out then. Or am I thinking of... No, wait, no, he's from 70, like, 5 or something. And... 
Krishna Applegate is from 71 or something. I, I forget. I feel like that 74 to 79, but anyway, you know, it's it's a joke. It doesn't have to make complete sense, especially in a sitcom. What's up? Oops. What's that in your pocket? My car keys. It's not just keys, it's the car keys. It's some, a softy, a hanging valley. Show the ladies what they can't have. I mean, because I'm married. Not because I can't. Because I can. He can't, you know. You want sex, you reminisce with the guys. I love Marcy's post-advice takedown of Al. You know, Al, there may be something on this planet with fewer brain cells than you, but whatever it is, wherever it is, I'm sure its name is Bundy. You should be on all fours, carting a wagon full of borax across the desert. Your compost, your phlegm, you are a true pork product. I don't like to eat that late. Then I just won't sleep. Are you sure it's no trouble? I'll never touch your car again. <laughs> And that he likes. Boy, wish I had a wife. Can I use your... Never mind. I'll send her back out. A couple of weeks, maybe not for a couple of months. After all, the dent's not even on the driver's side. And they laugh. I feel like a later season episode has the same plot but wackier, but I don't know. I know I say that a lot. Al said he has plenty of them when, you know, when about what he told Steve to keep from getting aroused. So Peg does sometimes arouse him, and he intentionally focuses on something to keep himself from becoming physically aroused. Man, they really are a messed up couple. But at the same time, that does also actually point out if it is, you know, even if, it, if physically the attraction is there, there might be something emotionally or mentally that stops it. Just married with children. And this is number 31, and yeah, I agree with that ranking. What are we having for breakfast? Nothing. We had that yesterday. But you sure know how to cook it. You got those grass stains off the back. I told you, I fell. <laughs> Here's your laundry. You know, she found a way to get the their clothes clean. You wanna get that, Mars Marcy? <laughs> I'm not going to the laundromat. That's where all the raunchy fat white crunchy blondes be at. Money is important to me. And they aren't. Wow, that's much better than my idea. I can't look at the host without seeing the teacher he plays in 10 Things I Hate About You, which I watched a bunch of time when it was new. I, I gotta admit, I really, I like both early career, really, you know, bitter, angry Julia Stiles and you know, then later where she, you know, could play more happy and, yeah. Only if it really was goodbye. A pretty one. Let's earn those balls. Remember, honey, you already have a bowling ball. Ready to roll. And that's the husband from Unhappily Ever After. Jeff Pearson, or... Yeah. I think that's his name. As fake looking as the effect is, it's hilarious how fast Al is willing to spin Peg. And she, you know, awkwardly walks still dizzy and gets right up to him and strangles him. Man, Roland already really sounds like the unhappily father. He didn't anymore on Dexter. That's what we're here for. Yep. Accurate to game shows and reality shows. 
Unhappily Dad didn't get to be all that funny. It's really too bad he's... I mean, Unhappily Ever After was a complete ripoff of Meredith Children, and there were several conceptual things that just did not work as well. But he was really funny on it. It could be a funny show, definitely. And I do appreciate that in that as well, they had the more liberal and, you know, female-friendly character as a regular. Shouldn't it be the men's turns to torture the women? The women had two, you know, even in a row, and there was only one versus the women. A woman's place is in, is in the home, and she lets loose. Don't give him any water. <laughs> and he can turn on the, you know, not only the lights, but also the TV. Does that mean the Bundys have three cars now? Peg had her own in season one. Yeah, actually, just a few episodes ago, she mentioned that, you know, her car doesn't go to the mall. And the, yeah, there, there are episodes this season where she talks about her car. Not Al's, so. The roads come into the game show so late they barely have time to be funny, but it does get wacky. And I do love the bit about the kids selling them out for junk food, you know, for a square meal and then smash cut and they're sitting there in the audience eating junk food. <laughs> Father load. And this is ranked 122, which is also pretty accurate. Hey, man, you got a dollar? I don't think so. Keep it on your brother. I'm going to bingo. Yes, but I'm a weenie with... Yeah, I, I like that they repeated that line. What are you doing, pig? <laughs> oh, no. And he keeps moving it, and she keeps grabbing the thing. Your hat and his face is just, yeah. Looking for, by accident, 202060. Oh, you mama bear, you. Steve went to the track. <laughs> hey there, shoe man. And then she really did come behind the store again, and Steve just lets her walk away. You've got me. You've got me. Just like before we were married. And they immediately hear the money. And, you know, for, at first I was like, wait, why did he get rid of the, the stereo if he was just going to give them the money? If they found out about the stereo, they know he spent money and he would have, they would yell at him for that. CD players, I remember those. I don't think we have enough money. <laughs> He was hiding my $150. Right, Steve? Right. And hopefully he gets to spend that and keep the thing he spends it on. All in the family. That's actually the name of a more family-friendly sitcom, isn't it? Like a 60s one, so yeah. But I guess it's not the first of those titles that they reference. The Wanker Wagon from Milwaukee. Skilled labor. Because they're on their way. The axle hitting the road. Only way she can travel. Let me tell you what the going rate is. And the hoot nanny. And this is another wacky episode. We're famished, and Buck runs for the hills. And Uncle Irwin is played by a wrestler, the wrestler they got the name Bundy from. And I'm not really into wrestlers, but you know, in this case, I guess I love him in this episode. He's so much fun, and just yeah, I anything that contributed to the greatness of Married with Children. You know, his name is King Kong Bundy, and you know, he apparently like plays at least one other role, but I don't offhand remember that, but yeah. 
he's you know the the physical stuff in this is great and like his his facial expressions also I see straw now there's nature go bother it rotting rubber sheets first bear wedding joke about but I think first of quite a few and the triplets are actually famous as triplets don't tell the IRS and all right I'll help but I'm not looking at them but I'm not looking at them then you have my blessing and he has my pity do it Kale thank your father a kiss away and that's Al's cue give me a beer will you Mars no no make yourself at home Al then you owe me one did you ever just want to be alone and they nod man Steve has just decided they are not having sex anytime soon but Al is getting a show the other two want to keep her company that was never proven get back to your romance and I love their body language so secrets to the enemy man that is the hair on the palm of his hand indoors or outdoors cats and dogs cats and dogs what are you talking about nothing I was just hungry he wasn't on the list get in get in there like they're animals farm animals or something I guess your lives are meaningless compared to Honda what do you think I'm gonna do? Leave it in the machine? You didn't hide it, did you? It wasn't on the list. And one of them nods and the other two shake their heads. And you never even got his wallet. Or did you? He lowers his head. And the whole episode was in his head and how bad can it be? And smashes his head through the... And again, these quotes are gonna be out of order. I just I copied and pasted this list. I, I did read through them, but copied and pasted this list, you know, very shortly before starting to record. Peg, this is the first three-day weekend I've had in a year. It's not like I'm gonna have a good time. You and the kids will be around here. But not the wank wagon from Milwaukee. Not that. Hondo is coming out tonight with some of the Duke's best work. It's never on TV. I bought a blank tape, I got the VCR set up. I want to watch Hondo. I want a clean videotape of Hondo. Nobody is going to bother you watching Hondo. That's it. Sit down. Everybody sit down because I'm taking charge now. Peg, kids, go upstairs because I'm solving everybody's problems now. Everybody move closer together and say, Swiss cheese. <laughs> hey, Uncle Irwin, are you going to put your head through the TV again? If you're good. You're not good enough for our family. That's because I've never been brought up on a morals charge. Al, how about taking us all out to eat? Eh, what the hell, kids? You didn't really, you really didn't want, you really didn't didn't really want to go to college. We'd rather eat. Hey, Uncle Irvin, when we get to the restaurant, are you gonna put your head into the salad bar like last time? Well, if you're good. Al, my family's been here for nearly six hours and you haven't said more than ten words to them. 
You know I don't ask for much from you because I know how severely limited you are, but just this once, talk to them. Show them that you are paying attention to them. Go home. That's the start. Say something else. Show them that you care. Go home and drive safely. And yeah, you know, overall, still not wacky or a lot of sex yet, but still loving it. I've read other parts of this franchise, the links are in the description box. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.